Call of Duty Classic Final Game Review. Yes guys, it is time. Time to tackle one of the biggest franchises of video gaming history and it starts right here with the first Call of Duty game with the painstakingly crafted name Call of Duty Classic on the Xbox 360. Now, this game takes place within the confines of the bloody mess that was World War II and was billed as a historical first-person shooter taking place in campaigns within American, British, and Soviet operations that were crucial to defeating Nazi Germany, and as such you end up playing as three different faceless soldiers. Private Martins for the Americans, Sergeant Evans for the British, and Private Veronin for the Soviets, all equally unimportant. The story of the game is albeit the whole point since the gameplay is essentially an hours long shooting gallery shooting the same person about 2,000 times and while it has caused staple vehicle sections, it really doesn't evolve beyond that as the limited amount of guns quickly makes the shooting gallery become incredibly tedious, especially when the shooting sections seem to be one entirely at random with little having to do with luck. It's like the Dark Souls thing, where you keep banging your head into the wall of a hard game section, but instead of the wall being beaten by sheer gaming prowess and a little lady luck, COD Classics walls are beaten down seemingly when the random number generator says it can. COD Classic is so fabulously luck-based that sections like the Flat Gun Village Defense, the Truck to Safety, and especially the V2 Rocket Pillbox Field are only incredibly difficult since about 90% of enemy soldiers carry a machine gun, and with each bullet fired it's entirely random if they hit or not, and these sections have such high enemy density that the battle of attrition becomes horridly unbearable. And you know what the funny thing is, despite how difficult some of these sections are with the enemies having the uncanny ability to shoot you a split second after you show your head with perfect aim at 300 yards natch, is that when you defeat the section, it's ultimately inconsequential. This issue stems from how the story is laid out in this historical first-person shooter, and since the campaigns you fight in are divvied up into the American, British, and Soviet sections, absolutely nothing in this game has any continuity to anything. Case in point. Once you finish with the first American and British section, and since they are in the same World War II operation, there is something, albeit it's barely anything, as a connection, but after that mission in 1944, you start the Soviet section defending Stalingrad in 1942. This could have honestly been its own game or storyline, but since it's overlaid with the American and British parts, the broken up mess means that this game barely has a story to play through. Since the game's story is basically a bunch of different military operations playing a series that has little to do with each other, there's no continuity and thus no interest to keep playing and seeing what's going to happen. This game fails spectacularly on a storytelling level because of how it's put together. There's no beginning, middle, or end, and without a climax anywhere in the game, when the game finally had one, it was incredibly dull, anticlimactic, and pretty much felt like the it's a dream twist ending. Now, like I said before, this game did have some set piece parts which Honestly, we're pretty much all misses. Well, except for one. The first one, to be exact, where the American sergeant somehow found a French station wagon and the brigade used that to break through enemy lines, which was actually pretty exciting, mostly because there wasn't the dense amount of enemies like in later set-piece sections, and the highlight for this was when we crashed the station wagon and had to steal a German citizen's car that was just sitting around and it was being driven by a private instead, which had some hilarious dialogue in it from his ineptitude at driving. Other than that, this game had flat gun turret sections which were either boring point and clicks with no stakes, or they ended up being obnoxiously difficult because having to destroy war machines and deal with the enemies closing in and having to rely on the dumbass AI to keep me safe leads to a lot of bullshit deaths in these sections. Then there's the truck driving section in the British campaign where we first had to get across a bridge, defend our explosives expert with waves of enemies coming across, and if one made it to him then we insta-failed. However, the game then checkpoints and you have to ride through a gauntlet of hard-to-beat enemies because you are fighting trucks this entire time with the Panzerfaust, a German anti-tank weapon which has to be one of the most unwieldy guns in video gaming since this thing has a high tendency to miss, which is unfair due to having to deal with a truck filled with machine gunners and opposing Panzerfaust that can insta-kill your ass. This section is obnoxious for two reasons. One is that the last part is ridiculously long and is filled with dense enemies and limited health, and two, your truck does have Panzerfausts, it's just that there are a limited number, which would be good if we could use them economically at will, and if you thought that that was possible, then I think you're giving Infinity Ward a bit too much credit, because if you decide not to use the Panzerfaust, then your moronic AI partner will use them instead, and he has a 100% chance of missing. Even if there isn't an enemy in range, this pebble-headed goose fuck will decide to launch a Panzerfaust, which again are limited, at the fucking ground when the only enemy available is driving on a road 15 feet above where he's shooting! 
There... There are just no words. I am completely flabbergasted that some fifth grade dimwit had the anti-brains to design an AI to work like this. And you know what's hilarious? This isn't even the worst part. The worst set piece in COD Classic is hands down the point in the game where your brigade is given the Nazi German tanks. First of all, developers, when you sacrifice fun for historical relevance, I do understand where you're coming from, but give me a fucking break, because when a vehicle in a video game has wheels that cannot turn themselves, and instead you have to control direction by first rotating the turret and then aligning the wheels into a new direction, trying to keep a straight line with the other tanks trying to kill you in this freaking three-legged whale-sized donkey will be the bane of your continued existence. Thankfully, the enemies in this section have no ability to aim correctly, so it's not a huge problem, and these tanks only appear in one part of the game, but for the love of the almighty spaghetti monster, the person who put this thing together should be flogged with his own shoelaces. Call of Duty Classic was the game that started the Call of Duty franchise, one of the most powerful and criticized in the entire gaming field, and there's reason for that, and it shows even in its first game. The reason being that Call of Duty Classic is the absolute baseline you can do for creating a video game. All it is, is just a prolonged shooting gallery in different settings broken up by set pieces. It's a bog-standard formula to create a first-person shooter, and it doesn't decide to be anything more than that. Just barf up another iteration of the most famous operation in World War II and call it a day. And one more thing before my final opinion, developers, if you are going to remake a game, please put in the time to update the cutscenes as well, because when the cutscenes from a game are about five years older than the graphics, it looks incredibly jarring. Okay, so Call of Duty Classic is a prolonged series of shooting galleries broken up with set-piece vehicle and turret sections. We've established this along with the game still being able to kick your ass when it decides it wants to, just like a true douchebag. My final critique on this game is that it's boring. The gameplay is inconsequential and has random victory generation with little differentiation between areas, with the best differences being between the American-British campaigns and what they were doing as Soviets because then you got the different region art, and finally, the story for COD Classic is a mismatched mess, with the game not even going in chronological order of events, which means the story has no continuity and no sense, and without the ability for a story to have a beginning or a climax, what's the point? Well, actually, that's not fair. This game technically has a climax. Despite the game never setting up an overarching bad guy besides saying, Hey, there's Nazis. Jazz hands. But anyway, the final mission was terrible because it takes place when Berlin has essentially been won and there's only about 20 to 30 people left to shoot. Our first objective is to take out flat guns to make the way for our tanks. But I have no idea why, since there's literally no Germans left to man the guns we're destroying. Anyway, we basically storm in the Berlin capital, kill about 15 more soldiers, and wave the Soviet flag on the roof, and that's all the game had. What makes this worse is that this section takes place right after a British section, where we destroy a V2 rocket field. You couldn't have even backed this section up with some build-up. Nope, it's just one minute we're here, and the next is 1940 fucking 5 and we just magically take in Berlin. I could barely recommend this as a game, and I definitely wouldn't be playing it again. Here are the final scores. And I'm just gonna stop this review now with a victory for gamers, because I think I've lost the will to continue writing.